are excited to learn English, you found some great resources, and you're ready to practice some pronunciation. But there's nobody to talk to. But did you know you can actually do a lot of pronunciation practice by yourself and not seem crazy while you're at it? Okay, maybe a little. These are 10 of the best hacks to practice your English when you don't have anyone to practice with. Hack number one, reverse dictation. Phones are the ultimate gadget for studying. You can use your phone to review flashcards, check a dictionary, and yes, even check your pronunciation. One way to do this is through reverse dictation. Dictation means to listen to someone speaking and then write down what they're saying. Now, reverse dictation turns everything around. This time, it's you who has to speak and your phone will be the one writing everything you say down. This is doable through the speech recognition feature, which is present in pretty much all modern phones and operating systems, including Android and iOS. You can then say a simple sentence, I need chocolate, or you can even dictate a whole grocery list out loud. If your phone ends up misspelling a word, then it's possible that your pronunciation is not clear. The beauty of this method is that you can keep repeating the sentence until your phone recognizes each word perfectly. Number two, minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are two words in English that are almost the same except for one sound. It's very common for English learners to get these two words mixed up. For example, most English learners have struggled at some point with the minimal pairs rich and reach, or maybe even fit and feet. Here are some other examples. Lot, rot. Sink, think. Pun, pan. To conquer minimal pairs, turn them into a tongue twister or a warm-up exercise. Pick one to five minimal pairs. Say each pair repeatedly and as fast as you can, but while still maintaining proper pronunciation. You can do this every morning or whenever you're practicing your English. This forces you to distinguish between the two different words. The next time either word comes up in conversation, you'll be able to pronounce it much more accurately. Number three, sound mastery. Regardless of your level of proficiency in English, there's probably still some sounds that you have trouble mastering. Usually what makes these sounds so difficult is that you're not used to pronouncing them. To make these sounds more familiar, the key is repetition. Take a sound you're not comfortable with and make a list of words with this sound. Then write each word on an index card or a post-it. Then you should scatter these words into places you'll see every day around your house. You might put one index card or post-it in your bathroom, another one in your wallet, and a third one on your computer. Whenever you see the word, say it out loud. Every time you encounter the word, you'll get more and more confident with pronouncing the sound. Number four, do-it-yourself interview. One secret, and hear me out here, to improving your English is talking to yourself. And not just in your head, I mean talking out loud. To turn it into a daily practice, make your own little recordings. Each day, answer a specific question in English for two minutes while recording your answer on your phone. The question should get you talking about your life, so no yes, no questions. Check out these questions. How have you changed since last year? If you could meet one historical person, who would it be? What's a joke or a meme that you recently laughed about? No need to come up with the questions yourself. There are plenty of question lists available online. And yes, these are the same questions people ask at parties or when they want to get to know someone better. After recording yourself, take a break for at least five minutes just to refresh your mind. Then play back the recording and observe how it sounds. Write these down as a list of things to work on for your next pronunciation practice. You can even use the same questions to compare and then see your progress. Act it out. 
English movies and TV shows are some of the most efficient and fun learning materials that you can use. However, for this activity, you'll be going beyond passive listening. Instead, you'll have to pick a specific movie scene and give each line your full attention. To make it easier, start with the subtitles turned on. Listen closely to each line and hit pause and repeat the line exactly how the actor said the line. There's a little bit of acting involved. You won't be imitating only the pronunciation, but also the intonation and the emotion behind the line. Here's a movie clip you can start with. It's from the movie The Devil Wears Prada. This is an interesting clip to start with because you'll be going back and forth between two completely different people. Miranda, the strict job interviewer, and Andy, the eager job applicant. They have different mannerisms and very different ways of speaking. This method can be a bit of a hassle because you have to keep replaying each line repeatedly. Plus, you'll have to make sure that the subtitles are correct or else you'll be repeating the wrong words. Or you might even not understand what on earth you're saying. This is why I suggest using Fluent U for this exercise. It's an app that teaches you English through real world videos, ranging from music videos, TV shows, movies, documentaries, and a lot more. The subtitles are always correct and they're interactive. So along with the definition, you also get example sentences and videos. At the end of each video, there's a quiz along with speaking questions, which you answer all by yourself. No partner needed. Make sure to sign up and try it out for yourself. In the link below, there's a free 14-day trial. Number six, sing along. Choose a song that you like so much that you could listen to it over and over again. For example, I'm a fan of Pharrell Williams' song, Happy, so I might start there. Once you have a song, play it and listen for any connected speech. In English, words can sometimes flow into each other as if there's no space between them. The phrase fall in love has three words, but it's often pronounced fall in love. This might not feel natural for you to do at first, but us native speakers do it all the time. It's easy to notice and imitate connected speech in songs, especially in the chorus. Finally, sing along with the song while also making sure you're connecting the speech in the right places. In the song I mentioned, the phrase, that's what you want to do, is an example of connected speech. Number seven, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are one of the most time-tested pronunciation exercises around. After all, it's not just language learners who use them. Tongue twisters show up in party games and also public speakers frequently use them to prepare for speeches. I know I do for my videos. Many tongue twisters don't make much sense in their meanings. That's because the whole point of a tongue twister is the sound. Tongue twisters repeat the same sound in almost every word. That's why they're a challenge. Here are some tough tongue twisters for you to try. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Frivolous fanciful fanny fried fresh fish furiously. How many snacks could a snack stacker stack if a snack stacker snacks stacked snacks? If two witches would watch two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Say each tongue twister slowly at first and then speed up and see how fast you can go. For more of these, there are some handy apps that sort tongue twisters by level. There's Tongue Twisters English for Android and Tongue Twisters Daily for iOS. Number eight, your day in haiku. Got 15 minutes to spare? This writing exercise doubles as a pronunciation exercise. The basic idea is to write a quick poem in English about your day. There's an extra rule though. You have to write it as a haiku. A haiku is a poem that has three lines. In the first line, there are five syllables. The second one, there are seven syllables. And the third line, there are five syllables one more time. 
Let's say you really enjoyed your breakfast. After all, it is the best meal of the day. Oh, my breakfast. I love my breakfast. Scrambled eggs, toast, sausages. Throw in some ketchup too. After writing your haiku, recite it in three different tones. You can do a normal voice first and then play around with different moods. Monotone, like a robot. Sing song. Happy. Angry. Whispering. This will broaden your emotional range when talking in English, so your speech will sound more natural. If these tips are helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. We post new videos every week. Number nine, back chaining. Certain word beginnings and endings can be hard to pronounce, especially if they're not present in your native language. For example, some English learners struggle with the S sound at the start of a word, like in school and snakes, while others struggle with words ending in consonants, like pan or scientist. If you can relate to this, you can try a more targeted pronunciation exercise, back chaining. Here's how it works. Bucket, the bucket. Dropped the bucket, accidentally dropped the bucket, I accidentally dropped the bucket. This exercise can be super helpful because it forces you to isolate specific sounds and words. For an added challenge, tell a whole story while back chaining. Go for at least three different sentences. It's a bit of a mind bender and you can end up talking about some funny scenarios. Number 10, where's the stress? Whatever your native language is, there's probably one part of English pronunciation that didn't come naturally to you at first, word stress. This refers to a syllable in a word that's emphasized or spoken the strongest or the loudest. Here's word stress in action. Blanket, amazed, psychology. Wrong word stress is one of the most common pronunciation mistakes people make. That's not surprising considering how random word stress is in English. Here's what you can do. Grab an English book or article that you can read and then pick a single paragraph. Look out for words with multiple syllables and mark the word stress in all of them. Let's take an example from the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. I came home from school one day and no one answered the door. So I went and found the secret key that we keep under a flower pot behind the kitchen door. After you've marked the word stress on your own, check your dictionary to see if you got each word right. Then read each multisyllabic word out loud, exaggerating the stress. Finally, read the entire passage out loud while also keeping proper word stress in mind. Don't forget to download the free PDF where you can easily access all of these tips. You get the best results when you can practice English pronunciation every day. Luckily, you won't always need a conversation partner to do this. With the solo exercises from this video, you can work towards becoming an excellent English speaker, whether you're alone or with other people. Why not put hack number five to the test and watch this video right here, where I break down the English of a hilarious scene from Friends. I'll see you there.